Yeah, so I'm excited for to be here to share our stories. You know, um, I've asked specifically people to share their story, why they joined UVAM, what their UVAM story is. Sometimes they joined for one reason, and then as they got started, they realized that they had other benefits too that they didn't even know. And um, it's really kind of cool to, to see how that works. So we're going to start first with Grace at the top. Um, so she goes by Hune. Hune. Did I say that right? Hune? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I asked her to kind of share her story. She could tell you a little bit. She's actually under Katie. And we're going to hear from um, Katie at the, well, I have a little graphic. Katie wasn't able to attend, but she gave me a little graphic. And I'm going to show you all Katie's story at the end. So um, go ahead, tell us, how did you get started with Katie? So um, I, I mean, I've been searching for um, good books mm -hmm. and uh, a publisher that I could, you know, just look at and consistently buy, buy from uh, for a while, actually. Um, my passion is in books. I, I actually love literacy, uh, literature. I majored in English lit. Um, in college a while ago, but <laughs> so it's always been that. And I always loved creative stories and things of that nature. Um, I have three kids, three little kids, actually, um, all under age of five. Um, so I was hoping that I could get someone and get a um, get books that could actually um, keep them entertained. So that's mm -hmm. how I started searching. I stumbled upon Katie's um, uh, Liam Library Instagram account. Okay. Okay. And um, I started looking through the catalog online, and then um, I bought, I think, few pieces in the beginning just to kind of test it out. And I fell in love. I mean, the quality of the paper, the the, the colors, um, just the vibrant colors, and like the characters that the books had, and very animated. Um, I don't want to downplay all the books that are out there, but I, you know, no offense, but our books are pretty good. <laughs> so I don't think we're gonna have any problem with that. Yeah, <laughs> so that's that. how I stumbled upon Katie's account, and that's from there. Um, I didn't realize um, I could actually, you know, make extra income out of it. So I, I made few other purchases through Katie, and then um, she actually introduced me to the program, saying like, hey, you know maybe there's a different uh, path for you. So that's how I start, got started. Um, in the beginning, my entire, I think, um, wish was that, no, no, you know what? I'm, I'm probably not going to do this to make extra money. It's just going to be towards my kids. You know, I'll just buy for my kids and um, maybe I'll gift a few here and there for my kids' friends. And, you know, we'll see how it goes. And that's just how it just panned out and it just, <laughs> it just branched out from there just branched out from there yeah. and she's she has signed a little bit uh, tell me exactly do you remember exactly what, what month you signed up I think it was like end of July end of July so yeah. since then she sold like almost 5,000 she didn't know she'd sold that much no I well, didn't order today <laughs> I was like, you know yeah. You have really sold like a, a, a good amount, you know, just from people. And sh you have an Instagram account too, right? I do. Yeah. I do. And then yeah. um, I started actually posting like, you know, maybe 10 second clips of me reading to my uh -huh. And um, a lot of people actually like that. I mean, funny thing is the books are in English, but I'm actually reading to my kids in Korean because that's the language I speak to them in at home. And a lot of people were actually um, entertained by it because they're looking for us born books, but they're all in English. So they're like, oh, how do you read this in Korean? So, you know, that's how people showed interest. And um, I've done a driveway uh, book fair back in October. It was okay. like, it was nerve wracking, <laughs> but I think got I through it. I got it. through it. Um, and from there, it also helped um, just, I guess, um, my neighborhoods actually, my neighborhood, nearby neighbors, they found out also. Um, I also had a visitor from the uh, school district. So they were also um, interested. 
um, so, you know, just from there, little things kind of added up and that's how <laughs> that that's where I am. <laughs> so now you have some um, customers that are nearby and stuff like that too, that you get yes. to interact with and stuff like that. Well, cool. Tell us about your kids. What are their ages? Um, Noel, she's five. Um, Elliot is my son. He's two and a half. Okay. Uh, and my youngest is Ariel. She's one and a half. She's one and a half. Okay. Okay. And you have a creating, a, you, earlier you said you have a um, creative art writing degree, something like that. I do. So I minored in creative writing. Okay. I actually um, majored in English lit. Okay. Um, okay. Don't tell me how I ended up, uh, ended up there, but I did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, I do, um, I'm in marketing for a living. So okay. I actually have a full-time job. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so pretty your marketing busy. comes into play. Your experience yeah. with marketing comes into play. Actually, yeah. You know what? I, I actually didn't think it play that way, but it did. Um, <laughs> I started a new Instagram account. I didn't think I was going to get anywhere, but I actually did. And mm -hmm. I actually saw a lot of interest from people, which was mm -hmm. interesting. So, yeah. And you're gonna you're gonna hear a little bit more about Michelle in a little bit, and Michelle also has a writing degree. She is actually it's, it's a actually a marketing degree, but I do the writing for a living. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we we <did> first. <laughs> so it's something that I didn't even know. About. So yeah. Anyway, well, thank you so much for coming to share, and hopefully, even if you're dealing with kids in the background, you can listen to us. I know she said it's late there and she has to get her kids in bed and stuff, but you can listen to us so you can hear other people's stories too. So yeah, I have good. them in bed. It's just that they might get up. That's why I might just okay. have to run upstairs to okay. put them back. So. We're all moms and we know how that is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. I used to tickle backs while I would listen to meetings at the same time, you know, so that I could get them situated, you know, so it's amazing. So thank you so much for sharing. It was so great to get to know you and get to know a little bit more about each of us. So thanks. Thank and you. Thank you for having me. Sharing more of our story on Instagram and I'll, I'll be telling you more about that in a second. Okay, Michelle, you're up. Go ahead. Well, I think the timing of this is so interesting because it was actually six months ago to the date that I was preparing to um, host my first uh, online party, the Raising oh, wow. a Reading Party. I didn't realize and that. And that was, so the night, that night, six months ago today, I was also considering at the same time, should I become an independent consultant as well? And of course, Janice had presented both of the opportunities to me several times. And uh, I met Janice actually at the gingerbread market in Siena, which is the community where I live. And I just, I remember when I turned the corner of the building that I was in looking at all the different vendor booths and I saw all the books lining the tables and filling the display cases. And of course it was the most exciting thing for me of any of the vendor booths there. And um, so I, I looked at everything and I just, I felt like a child at a school fair, the way I used to feel when I was in school and you'd have the book fairs then. So I wanted to see all the books and open everyone and find out, you know, what's inside. And at that time, my son was probably a two or three years old. Uh, he was really small, but he loved books by then already too. So he was excited to see the books and so I, I, I bought some books there and stayed in touch with Janice and would buy books from her. And then I began to notice as I went to other events in the community, I would see other uh, vendor booths with people selling the Osborne books. And of course, we it always be kind of like the highlight of all of our uh, booths that we would visit to see the books and look at them and, and maybe buy one here and there. And, um, so that's kind of that's kind of the story that happened basically over you know a, a few years and then uh, I'm not sure what exactly prompted Janice to reach out to me again about hosting the party, uh, but she did. And then so the next and morning, it wasn't the first time I'd asked her to host a party. 
So yeah. just so you know, it wasn't the first time. And I was, I'm a, I'm a freelance writer and I'm a speaker, <laughs> but I'm primarily doing, um, was so focused on my writing and had so much work to do that I just couldn't even fathom, you know, doing anything else. But then, of course, with pandemic, you know, that affected, you know, different contracts and slowed some things down. So I had some time to consider it at that point. And so the next morning I woke up and I really felt like, I mean, in my spirit, I felt like the God, like God said, just try it for six months and see what happens. And so I contacted Janice and I said, I'm going to go ahead and join, you know, as an independent consultant today. And so that's what I did. And that was on August 8th because I went back and looked at my calendar. So that, that was exactly six months ago. And so I counted the days. So that was actually 184 days ago. And I just couldn't have kind of imagined like all the different things that would come out of this. So I, I, I wrote down sort of a, a, a list of, you know, what happened. And so I would say the first thing, which is really important for somebody who works, I think, freelance and you're used to kind of being so independent and, and by yourself. But I really feel like I became, was welcomed and be, really became truly part of a, a team, you know, a team that's not only committed to literacy, but also committed to family. So you've got that balance with, you know, I understand you need to work, but I understand you have a family too. So that was really important and feeling valued and supported in what I do. And then just, I've always been passionate about books, but really learning even more about literacy and becoming even more committed to advancing that, that cause was a benefit or that's come out of this. And then of course I've got Janice. So she's mm -hmm. a, a wonderful leader, you know, somebody that they're a mentor or somebody that I can, you know, always reach out to for guidance and ask questions. And I feel like she's constantly, and I know you're an art, art major, so like you're constantly painting this picture of the, <laughs> the vision and, and what can be. And, you know, as you grow your business and, you know, become a team leader and just, you know, move forward. And so that's really uh, beneficial as well. And then being a part of Janice's tractor team is really special to me because I, uh, grew up on a farm and so it helped me though really appreciate even more kind of my farming roots because of, again her painting this picture of what you're doing being like planting cultivating and harvesting your own farm and so that was extremely meaningful for me and I've received of course the the training that's just helped me build my own children's book business and you know it's allowed me to earn some extra money for my family my son is now five and he loves this business I mean he loves that I'm doing the book business and he gets so excited when we get the boxes of new books and he's he's able to he he's able to help me with a lot of things and he does help me like unloading the books out of the box and then preparing for events when we have a booth and setting up there and Janice has seen him too like he'll literally pick up the books and like go show them to somebody and people always kind of laugh they're like you got quite a little salesman there but he's uh he really enjoys it and that's neat that we can do that together that was a fringe and, benefit that she didn't know I don't think was going to happen yeah. yeah and it's it's really important I think for me in the season that I'm in because I'm working from home and I'm homeschooling him. And because I do my writing, I have such limited time. So to be able to do something as a business that he can be a part of is, is really important and is nice. And then another kind of plus that I didn't quite expect is that my husband has actually stepped in and helped with a few of the events too. So it sort of has become like a little family service project that we do together for in our community like if we're doing it at a school or a daycare or um, a different kind of event so it's, it's something that's kind of drawn us together because we work in totally different fields and we've never had that opportunity to do that and then i think just because of the way everything has been with the pandemic and being so uh, 
isolated. I had to be really, you know, careful uh, because of health reasons. But then when I was able, when I got out and started to doing, started doing some of the events, the outdoor events, it really was just so refreshing for me because I felt like I was able to reconnect with people and just really kind of restore the joy of just fellowship with interacting with people. It, um, speaking was always like the, the thing that balanced my writing. And so being able to do the Usborne book, books and more booths that helped bring back that balance again. And so that was another kind of added benefit. And then of course, just doing all the different events lets me use my creative skills and organizational and planning. And then all the different, like the tools that we are equipped with and the insight, the things with, that we learn to build our business. I feel that it's also helped me just with my my writing and speaking business as well. Just, I mean, we're kind of in a different time now. And so having to shift to doing things virtually uh, online and doing more graphic design. And so all of that's been been helpful just kind of across, across the board with everything I do. And I remember when she first did her Zoom party, she didn't know anything about how to do it. And she did a squeeze party too. Yeah. But we learned, you know, she learned. Uh -huh. so that was cool, you know. And I've told Janice this before too, that I just kind of, I'm so shocked because I'm having so much fun and it almost feels like, should I be having <laughs> so much fun working, doing something? Uh, and just in six months, I feel like I've had more fun than, you know, the last five years, all the different things that, that I've worked on. And then of course I've had some really meaningful uh, experiences as I'm sure all of you have with just the people that you're able to help find the books for their family, for their families. And so I just wanted to mention a couple of those. And so one of them was a friend who reached out to me after she'd received a couple of texts about book parties that I was doing, but she never responded. Um, but she has a grandson that she doesn't say very often. And he had been talking with her and he heard about Jesus and he didn't know who that was. He had never heard about him before. And so she was contacting me to find out, do you have a book about Jesus that I can give to my grandson so that he can learn? And so I was able to recommend like the story of baby Jesus and some of the nativity books that happened to be like right before Christmas. And uh, we got those books to him. And then we also were able to bless a family at Christmas time that had, that has three children and they have some challenges with the chronic, one of them has a chronic illness. And just being able to, to provide them with the books and the mother wrote and said that the, the children started reading the books like right in the middle of opening up their, their Christmas presents. And so that was pretty, that was pretty meaningful. And then the other kind of like where you end up and you don't really think you'll end up, but um, of course, and then Janice may not have known this either, but when I've, I've pretty much written all my life, but my very first desire when I was a child was actually to write and illustrate children's books. Mm -hmm. And I would have like these little things that I would write and have the little drawings. I still have some of them. And so just being able to be immersed in all the books and to see these amazing books written by different authors and illustrators it just really, uh, it's like it's fueling that desire within me um, and just helping me to kind of just keep believing that fulfilling my dream of writing and illustrating, illustrating is possible. Because look, you've got, you know, all these different authors who have done this. And then I, I shared this with Janice a while back, and she wanted me to share this as well, that um, when I had accepted the call to write, because it, it took me many years, even after I graduated, to realize that, hey, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And I like that fear uh, that gets in, like, really? Am I really yeah. supposed to do this, even though I went to college to do it, you know? <laughs> so that was in around 2004. And so somewhere, sometime after that, I remember having this vision of seeing this machine 
and it had all these, it was like dozens of children's books just like started pouring out of it. And, you know, I didn't quite understand what it meant at the time. I was just like, okay, I guess I'm, you know, I know I want to write children's books and so maybe those are all the books that I'll be writing. And I hadn't thought about it, you know, for a long time. It's sort of like, it was just always in the back of my mind. Okay. I really want to write children's books, but I've do a lot of other type of writing. I've worked for a lot of nonprofits doing uh, fundraising communication. I write a lot of medical articles, um, mostly nonprofit stuff. Like I haven't really spent a lot of time doing fiction writing, even though I love reading it and I want to write it. Um, but anyway, so when I started uh, as an independent consultant with Usborne Books and More, that vision kept coming back to my memory. Like just over and over this machine with all these children's books coming out of it. And so, and then of course this, I think I had may have mentioned that to Janice before this book came out, but then when this one came out, I remember reading this and seeing this machine, but it was actually this one and kind of this part of it where the book is drops out of here. And I was like, that looks very similar to that machine that I saw because it was it was sort of almost looked like a vending machine, but what I knew it wasn't a vending machine. <laughs> so this is like just so uh, just an amazing book, you know, for me to read and just see this process. And I even learned things that I didn't know about the publishing. But what, um, and I, I still believe that I will write and write books and perhaps illustrate, um, but. What came to me through all of this is I just felt like this huge burden was like lifted off of me because for so long I kept thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to write all those books that were in that vision. And, you know, I haven't even written the first one. And, you know, how am I going to do this? And just again, being able to, to do this as part of, you know, what, what I'm doing, you know, and, the fact that it it aligns so well with what I feel called to do with writing and and you know the homeschool mom investing in children and and things like that but then also just to know that it's not like this huge burden just on me you know I can write some books for children and that's great but I also have the opportunity to help support all these other authors who have written these books and help provide children with the hundreds of other books that Esper and Buxomar has and that I would never be able to have the expertise to write. So it's just like, oh, yeah, I don't have to write all that. So that was, that was a big, big thing that I didn't, you know, expect. And then the last thing that I think was the most kind of uh, unexpected, and this has kind of really been shaping in the last couple of, of months, is that it has really reawakened my, um, just my artistic abilities. And uh, I used to draw, you know, when I was little and in high school and my art teacher tried to get me to go to uh, pursue that, pursue art when I was in college. And I just didn't think I was good enough. And so I feel like God is really telling me, okay, you're not just a writer and a speaker and a teacher, but you're an artist too. And it's time to start the art. So that's kind of where I am after six months of, of doing this. And actually, and Janice kind of mentioned how I didn't really know anything about the Zoom, which I didn't. You know, I remember doing the Zoom meeting and not being able to figure out how to get the video on. But um, I did a, a baby shower for my niece last weekend. And that was kind of like a, a first thing for a lot of people in our family, you know, to attend a, a Zoom event. And even one person that was really kind of not wanting to do it at all, she was so surprised by how well it went that uh, now she downloaded the Zoom app and she's kind of ready for the next event. But <laughs> last night I actually celebrated my birthday. Today I turned 44. Oh, I didn't know that. You so, turned 34? 44. 44. 44. 44. Right. Yeah. Happy birthday. How fun. Thank you. So I celebrated last night with a virtual art party on Zoom with oh, some cool. of my closest uh, family members and, and a, a, some friends that have kind of followed my journey and kind of watched this 
unfolding of what God's kind of doing in my life with, with books. And so I'm just excited about, you know, what's next, you know, what's going to come. I know there's a lot more. And, but I feel that Esborn Books and More is a really key chapter in this story. And it's the story that I get to write and read and actually perhaps draw as well. Create. And just share. Yeah. Uh -huh. with, with other people like you. And so it's, it's exciting. And then like Janice and I talked about it. So there's just the theme for this year about our story is just so incredibly meaningful. So I'm, I'm glad that I said yes. <laughs> Do you know the um, Pablo Picasso quote? Which one? One of, my, and one of my very favorite is every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain an artist once he or she grows up. Oh, that's good. And you're an artist, even with everything, with writing, everything is mm -hmm. all under that little terminology is yeah. artist, because you can be a writer, you can be an artist, you can be everything under that yeah. terminology, because an artist creates uh -huh. You can create art, you can create music, you can create, you know, videos, doesn't matter. Yeah. You're creating, you know, right. and that's what an artist does. So that's kind of like your new um, thing and you get to, uh -huh. um, you know, create in this business too. But I want to tell her something. Okay. Brooke wants to say something. Okay. <laughs> um, for your son, you need to start paying him because like, <laughs> like maybe like $1 each, each time. But it's, I think it's going to teach him to love, to learn how to love his job when he gets older. And I think okay. that's what I've learned. So, like, uh -huh. you know how to love your job. And, like, so many people go to work, like my dad, for instance, he does not like his job. And I just can't believe that. It's just, if you can have the job that you really want, then why just stay in that job? Right. <laughs> so, I... Yeah, I just but think part of perfect. part of it is what we've talked about with her is being able to dream that you can get something where you can get paid to do something you love. You know, you have to be able to dream right. that you can actually do that and that you can yeah. make that yeah. happen. And um, and it and, and I mean, it could be a paid job outside of the home. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that either. It's just whatever makes you happy. But going mm -hmm. after that dream and being able to um, have that happiness for you mm -hmm. is what's some people can't they, they they're not willing to dream you know and mm -hmm. to take those risks so then they end up just sitting in that job that they hate because they don't right. want to take that chance to go after what's important so mm -hmm. i think that's a really really cool thing and it's good that yeah. I before i go to college <laughs> yeah. yeah and it really does it gives you that opportunity to kind of have that balance because I mean even through the six months I you know had a recruiter come after me and say will you come back to work full time and work you know as a writer for you know such and such place and you know and I of course I prayed about it and it just I just didn't feel like that's what I was supposed to do because everything that I've worked to try to to build with being able to stay home and homeschool my son and then just having the flexibility to pursue my writing. I mean, yes, I, I ghostwrite for other people and do marketing and fundraising communications for organizations. And that's part of that's part of my calling as well. But I also have a voice and I also have things that I write from my heart. And that's the thing that always gets pushed to the side when I have to work full time outside the home. And so this you know, is allowing me to be able to just continue on this path and hopefully continue my, my writing and my voice. Mm -hmm. So, yep. and I, I was going to show you guys, I put this on tonight. So my husband got me the little book charm. Oh, and okay. He got me the artist palette too, but I, that's good. I this one. so that's great. Cause he's another example of a husband that's kind of turned the corner a little bit. Cause when she first started, he didn't know what she was doing or why she would do this or it was just a, a very different kind of scenario so mm -hmm. it's really neat to see that he's turned the corner and that I think he's seen her little son is Joshua and I think he's seen the joy that Joshua gets out of it and I think that is just an amazing gift you know that 
that he that he gets out of that. So thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing. Does anybody else You're have welcome. any other questions for her? We're gonna go on to Sharon and let Sharon tell her story. And um, this is a person that probably signed a year and a half ago, maybe in, something like that. Maybe it was a year and a half ago in the middle of in October, or something, something like that. Anyway, she has in her legacy, in her legacy since she started over just uh, a year ago. I mean, a year and a half ago, she has sold forty six thousand two hundred and seventy two dollars in books. Can you believe that? <laughs> and she just turned her very first trip and we're just so so excited for her because one of the things about earning your first trip is at least it has been that way with me it becomes an addiction you, you know it becomes a habit once you know that you can do it it just becomes it just happens you know and um you know one of the things is just so fun to see it and and to just see it come to play um, every single year. And then you get to have memories with your family, which we're going to do. I'm taking the triplets for their um, senior year to Atlanta. So we're going to get to celebrate there. But the last trip that they all three went on is when we went to um, 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 Ireland. Um, a couple of them have been on the other trips vice versa like Greg got to go with me just tour um for Hawaii and stuff like that but um that was the last one that we're all that we're all on but it's so excited so and we're so excited to have Sharon she is really really committed to our literacy mission and I'm not going to tell much of her story because I want her to tell it but um we're just so excited she's here so go ahead so I'm not going to be anywhere as eloquent at all <laughs> it doesn't matter as, as michelle that's okay that's okay um, so my in my previous life i was in federal law enforcement so that was the that's the only other real job i've had is working for the government which is not like any other job that you have trust me so <laughs> yeah i stopped i stopped doing that when my after my daughter was born, my daughter's now 13. So <clears throat> that's been a good 13 years ago. I stopped doing that. And I've had a son, my son along the way. And there's always, and I just stayed home. I stayed home. Now, at that point in my law enforcement career, I felt like I didn't really need to go any higher. I was like, I didn't want to go into, man my next level up would have been management. I didn't want to go into management. And as you might ex assume working for the government is very male dominated. And I was getting pretty tired of that and some of the, you know, just baloney that occurs. So um, when I got pregnant and I realized, okay, how am I gonna raise this baby? I'm working terrible hours. My husband was working terrible hours. I think I'm gonna stop working. So I did. And then I was a mom. I'm still a mom, but then I was just a mom. And it was really a hard, it was a really a hard move for me to just no longer have my own income, no longer have my own thing, um, but it was fine. So anyway, fast forward, because I had a little girl, I would randomly go to fairs and see Usborne books. And every time I was like, I love these books. I love these books. I wanted to buy all of the books. So I've bought, I mean, I, after, after becoming a consultant, I realized I have labels on different books from all sorts of people because I bought them at all sorts of places and random fairs in different states and stuff. But anytime I saw a booth, I bought books. I was that girl. So I don't even know how it was that I ended up joining under Diana back, at, it, was, it was September 20, 20, September 2020 that I finally joined. You um, remember you, you attended one of my parties too. I did. And I, I did because you. I used to buy you stuff, buy from you at Garden Oaks. And so I knew you, I knew Diana because of the gym. And somehow I attended, I guess, a party of Diana's. And she was like, girl, you need to do this. Um, <laughs> because even though my kids, 
So my, my, son, my youngest now is eight, almost nine. So we've aged out of some of the most awesome Osborne stuff. Like I really love the picture books. So that's like my favorite, probably my favorite part of Osborne. But in the meantime, I was, my son was eight, we were doing COVID and I was going to be homeschooling my son. And part of the curriculum I found for history required the Osborne Encyclopedia of World History as our textbook. And after getting that, I realized I was like, hey, not only does Osborne have these amazing picture books, but check out this encyclopedia. <laughs> it's so great. Like who knew an encyclopedia could be so good? And my son was like, mom, this book is so interesting. I'd wanna read it even, even if it wasn't for school, which coming <laughs> from my son is <laughs> huge. I was like, I know, this is a really interesting dictionary, it, encyclopedia. So, and then, you know, talking to Diana, she's like, you really should just try it. And I really, really wasn't sure that this was going to be something for me. Yeah, I told her she should try it too. And when she told me Diana had yeah. talked to her, I'm like, well, yeah, you need to do it. <laughs> right, right. You're kind of double teaming me. So I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, what do I have to lose? I'll try it. I'll try it. <laughs> It might be nothing, whatever. If it's nothing, it's no, I didn't lose anything, right? So mm -hmm. I joined. I'm definitely not a sales. That's the thing that scared me the most was like sales, pyramid scheme, like that like creeps me out. So anyway, I joined. And for the first probably six or eight months, really, all I did was part, I did you know, a party here or there. Um, you did some preschool. You did a few preschool. Well, papers. it was just so, so in, Mar in, in, in spring break of last year, I decided, you know what, I'm going to see if I can work with some preschools because that would be kind of fun. Maybe that would be fun. And so I, br I wrote down all these preschools in the area. I talked to Janice and Diana about who had who was already working with preschools. So I started doing that. And that was so fun. Like to me, the online party. Eh, they're fun, but they're not awesome, I guess. <laughs> but the in-person, helping people find books for their kids in person is super fun. Like, I just think it's so fun to talk to the kids. And anyway, so I realized, okay, I'm good at that. I'm actually good at this. Holy moly. Now, all along, my sister has been my biggest cheerleader. My family, my as in my husband and my kids, not, not, because they're so used to me just being available. So used to me being just, I'm the mom and I'm available and I do all the things. And now I had my own things that was taking away from the family. But I was like, you're gonna have to go right. So, so yeah, I mean, so then I thought, okay, maybe I should, maybe I should do this ESR because I would love to work with schools and libraries. My mom was a children's librarian. So it's kind of in my genes, I think, <laughs> to be like a total book nerd. Um, so I started doing that. And now I just, I mean, I totally drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I drank the Kool-Aid and it's, I just have so much fun. And I think the biggest, the thing that I've noticed that for me is so big is the support and encouragement. Mm -hmm. In my previous life, there was not support and encouragement. Now there should be in law enforcement, you would think your team would like have your back. Not always and not the way this is. This is a, for me, I mean, it feels like this is a, I want you to be the best you can be and it has nothing to do with the other person. It's, I really want you to succeed in a, in a selfless manner that, that does not exist in the government. It doesn't exist. Like I guess last December, at some point I was number one in sales and I got a letter from Randall White. Like <laughs> what? Like, is I, so I messaged and I put it like on my Facebook because I have lots of co old coworkers on my Facebook and I was like, okay, pre in my previous life, when I was recognized of doing something great, 
Like I won some awards for my work in investigations. And after that, my supervisor who already didn't like me hated me. And they all like teamed up on me and pushed me out of the, in my, out of my squad because I was challenging their manliness because I won an award. And it couldn't be because I was good at what I did. It couldn't be because I was working hard. It had to be some other weird thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and here's this group of people. I do something and they're all like, way to go. You did it. So great. We're so proud of you. And I was just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I've never, like, this is what it should be like. This is what things should be like. We should all be encouraging each other. And I think like, especially for women, women in my older other job, it was definitely, it was not supporting. It was not, there's so many women who are like, no, only one of us can be on top. Like only one of us can succeed. There was, it was really not, it was toxic. This is so different. Like, this is how it should be. We should be helping each other. We should be encouraging each other. We should be figuring out, okay, you're good at this. Let's help you do more of that. Or then let's help you get better at other things, but you're great. So to me, I'm just amazed. I, I never cease to be amazed. I get these crazy letters, like, congratulations on the hard work, Randall, smiley face. What? <laughs> like, it, it seriously, it blows, it blows my mind. So yeah, so I earned the trip and I was like doing the happy dance for days. Like I was exhausted because I was constantly like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And my family's like, oh, you want to I was like, no, I'm winning. The like all of January, I was like, no, I'm going to get this trip. They made it, a, I, I can do this. I'm going to do this. But you, you might not get it. Oh, I'm going to do this. And my kids were finally like, oh, mama has to work. Let her work. She's, she's getting us a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly finally it. finally the kids were like oh mama has to go work okay let her go yeah you got this <laughs> because she's getting us a trip and so now I did so they're finally on board my husband is his toes are over the edge of being helpful and supportive <laughs> so that's good my sister actually Michelle my sister gave me that same charm the book charm she oh, brought it really? down for me, she's like, I'm just so proud of you. You've done so great. And I just wanted to give you this. And I was just like, Whoop. you know, so I, I, I'm in my pajamas right now, so it's not on, but I pretty much wear it every day. Um, so it's really neat to have that little cheerleader, that little, it, it's person. so, it's so helpful. It's uh -huh. so, and it's just, it's so, I don't know, it's given me a bit, like I'm a creative person as well. And obviously in law enforcement, you're really not so much creative at all. And so I noticed that that was lacking in me when I, when I resigned, like suddenly I was knitting and sewing and, you know, doing all the things. And this allows me to do some of that too. Like in my, in my, in the online parties, I can kind of design them the way I want and I can do Canva things and I can make little advertisements. And so it's been fun. And like, I mean, I'm just wrapping up a fundraiser I just did. And we're, we, I think I have like 200 and over 250 um, book and plush sets to give to foster kids at Texas Children's. So that that's, it's just that my whole, my whole dining room is nothing but like stuffed animals and books right now. Cause I'm trying to organize everything to get it, you know, and it's, it's like, it's like Usborne factory is in my dining room. <laughs> it's just boxes and paper and, you know, so it's just, it's, I don't know. I'm just having, I'm having so much fun. I never in my, I'm so grateful to Janice and Diana for being like, you should maybe try this because you saw something in me that I didn't know was there. And I'm so glad you did. Well, we just, you never know what a benefit that it's actually going to give somebody. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you really don't know until they step in and, and do it. And then you just keep encouraging them. And I, I wouldn't, I couldn't be in a job that was any different. Um, yeah. You know, I have to be y'all's biggest cheerleader. I feel like that's how I do with my children. I have to be their biggest cheerleader. I have to believe the potential of them. And sometimes I'm on their case. Of course. That's because I love them and want the best for them. 
And yeah. you know, Diana and I know this too because we've been a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll be on her case sometimes, and it'll be tricky, you know. But it's the same thing. It's like when you want the best for them, you know. Like when she wanted, if you saw my Facebook about a little while ago, a couple of days ago, I guess I posted the story of Diana when she was earning her first trip, and that was just really tricky. I mean, she she had to earn it in a really hard time with Osborne. And, um, you know, I just would not let her give up. I mean, she it's like, tears. My mom was in tears when she found out. <laughs> but no, we were so, so excited. So anyway, I thank y'all for sharing your story. Grace, if you are still there, she was going to do some recognition for us. Are you there, Grace? I don't know if she's, she's on mute because she's dealing with kids. Can you come? Can you come? Thought she get, I thought she came off a of mute. Let me see. I am. You I are. Am. Yay. So okay, she's going to do some recognition for us really quickly for the, for the month. And um, I have a new um, thing that I have created called a, a, it's since this is the year of the story, I'm going to do team recognition now on story. So you can share it to your story with your name and highlights and all of that kind of stuff, because I think it's important. You know, so I'm kind of transitioning our, our recognition graphic, but um, you want me to pull it up, Grace, or do you have it, right? I should have you. it here. Okay. So do I just read what you sent me? <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. You can just read it and okay. I'll show them the graphics at the end. All right. So in our team, uh, Home Office Challenge 1 and 2 or 3 earners, Diana Bryan. Yeah, uh, Diana. Home Office Yay. Challenge two. two. Congratulations. She was Home Office Challenge two because she also had mm -hmm. a recruit. So for last month in January. So that's a good, that's a really cool thing. Diana, do you know what prize you're getting? Uh nope. <laughs> I think you're getting two hundred dollars in books. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Ooh, nice. You are. I think you're getting two hundred dollars in books. So that's great. Okay, go ahead. All right, next is um, Janice <laughs> is getting Home Office Challenge 1. Right, along with? Along with um, Sharon. Sharon, right. We both got Home oh. Office Challenge 1 for this okay, month. My son is crying, so I got to go. <laughs> okay, let me pull up okay, this sorry. graphic then. I'll pull up this graphic. Hold on a second. Let's see if I can do it. Let's see. Yeah, I'm sharing screen. So y'all get to see that creativity part of myself where everything's all over the place, but you'll get to see it. That's that orange part of you. That beautiful <laughs> orange. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But it is here somewhere. Let's see. I had it. Um, help me out, Brooke. Do you know where? What are you there it is. For? Recent. Should be in a recent. Should be. Okay, wait one of them was recently here we go i have the tractors too under a folder because i am getting better and better i'm getting more and more organized so they should be under tractors should be should be should be and it should be because i wasn't planning on bringing them up but since she has to go real quick i want to show you okay what did i name it let me think let me think what did i name it you would think it would be under recent huh See, this just shows you what. It's none of those. No, it's not any of those. What did I? It should be UBM. That's what I named it. I don't know. And it's January. So UBM tractors, January. Ha ha ha. There you go. There's at least one <laughs> of them right there. We're going to do this one. We'll go back to Home Office Challenge One in a second. Well, there we go. Can y'all see this okay? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is going to be for you to post on your story and for you to brag on yourself and to let everybody know your story and how great your team is. So as a team, and I don't care if your name was not on here, it doesn't matter. I only list, I could only list the top 10 people now, but we did, we couldn't make $31,000 and $995 in sales without everybody. So therefore, you can still post it 
but Diana did 15,455. Wow. Yay! Diana, she was working toward owning that trip, also the double in points. And then Sharon, as we talked about, did 8,153. Uh, That's what she needed to earn the trip. And I did 4,413. And then Katie, who couldn't be here tonight, but I want to show you when we end, do not let me forget, I need to show you her story, um, did 930, uh, 923, Grace, five, 594. And then um, um, the other ones that I don't even, I don't know all of these. And that's what, when our team grows, it's amazing. But that's why I loved having um, Grace here tonight. So I get to actually see her and know her and get to know a little bit about her and stuff like that. But these are the other ones. Jitsu, who's now in Korea, having a baby. Something about being, uh, being able to do what you want to do is go to Korea for six months and then come back and still and still work Osborne a little bit while she's gone. So it's all the flexibility. But um, and then there's Grace. There she is, 276 last month. And then Eugene is another one that did 270. And both of these girls are top sellers. But month of January is usually lower in sales on a normal basis. But because we had double and trip points, it helps a lot. So that was that. This is Home Office Challenge 2. Here we go. Here's our new graphic that hopefully you can share. And that's where Diana did Home Office Challenge 2. What, the reason I put three is a lot of months we'll have either Home Office 1, Home Office Challenge 2, which is one recruit, or Home Office Challenge 3, which is two recruits. So we'll have different prizes. So it's kind of something to kind of think about. Um, and then um, we added some new people right there. Now for the month of this month right now, Katie and Grace are still in a big competition here. I think they're both four at four right now. So they're just, it's amazing what they're doing, but um, I don't know. I'm gonna have to make the print a little bit littler as we add all these two name, team members, but I definitely want to do that. So that is for the month of January. And then I'm gonna show you, hopefully I will see Katie's story somewhere on here. I think it's just a desktop. <laughs> I saw it earlier. Okay, let me search for Katie. Because I asked her to come and share her story and she could not. And I can find it otherwise. I can always find it on my phone. You know, uh, I did see it when we first logged in here. Where is it? I have it on my phone and I sent it to her. Let me see where I, um, I sent it to y'all real quick. Because I really want to show y'all this because I want, what I would like to do if y'all would send me like, you know, a little statement, like what UBM has meant to, meant to you, something like that. I would like to do more of these little statements. I'm gonna email it to myself real quick so I can pull it up since I don't know where it goes here. Airdrop it. Oh, airdrop it, okay, yes, we will do that. Thank you, Bluetooth off, turn on Bluetooth. Did I do it? Okay. Where is it? Behind everything. Oh, there. There it is. Okay. Can y'all still see my desktop? Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to create something like this that people can have on their stories. And what I did with Grace, um, with Katie's, and this is how she wrote it to me. If she wants me to edit it, I will edit it before I actually post it. Um, because again, the really cool thing about our team is we have a lot of Korean people who are reaching other people like we talked about, which is great and wonderful, but sometimes English is their second language, so I don't want to embarrass them or make them feel bad or anything like that. But this is what she sent me today when I asked her if she would write out her story. And I want to do different graphics with all of y'all. And I can get a really cool picture off your Facebook or I can get a really cool book picture. You can, you can decide. But I want to do this probably this week, if possible, if you can get it to me, to really promote the, the um, For Love of Literacy um, kit that we have going on right now. But what she said was, 
When I first joined you, ma'am, I was thinking that I just wanted to make my boy get more interested in reading books. Before I joined you, ma'am, my boy Liam did not really read the book by himself. But after a few months, um, I joined you, ma'am. He started to find the books and read by himself. I put, I put books everywhere in my house where he could see. And she also said, I also love the people that I have met. And she, I took just part of what she said, and I'm gonna read you the rest of it really quickly. Um, I think that's how Riley is. But yeah, that you think that's how Riley is? Yeah, it says you have books everywhere. Right, then that's where she gets. She just, she knows she could them off and just start grabbing books. Yeah. Talking about my grandbaby. She said, I decided to open the Instagram account for my UVM business to recommend and share with other parents. It made me feel so happy, just like we were talking about, when other kids like the books that I recommended. I think the most valuable thing is that UVM is made of lots of good relationships with other moms. Not only do we share about books, but we also share information about raising the kids. And believe me, Diana and I definitely do that. Um, you know, she's helped me lots and lots of times for different things when I've been upset about something. So anyway, I um, just want you to really see if you can. I want, thank you for being here tonight and letting us share a story. I want you to not hesitate to share the Love and Literacy Kit with different people. You can say it may be the craziest thing in the whole wide world they men have ever thought about it. And they might tell you no, but it's OK if they do. Because what you're doing is just like the tractors say, we're planting seeds. With Michelle, we planted seeds. With, with Sharon, every time she came to the booth, she planted seeds. For the time was right. And when the time was right, then she joined. And that's what we're doing. It's just, and that's why we're called the tractors, is for that reason, for planting seeds. <laughs> you're not going to share your story? Nope, not going to share my story tonight. Um, Marcy, it wants to uh, if you can share your story real quick, Marcy, we kind of ran over a little bit, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about your story, if you will, Marcy. Because I asked her to share just a little bit about her story. Um, you caught me off guard. I don't know if I'm really prepared. Um, I guess um, I look back on my history and I... I just celebrated eight, no, 16 years. 16 years. So she's plus. been longer than 16, 16. 16 plus because I originally started in May of 1994 um, when I started homeschooling my first child who loved books. And her first book that she loved was the first encyclopedia book, which is now the internet book. But it, back then it was a very thin book and she would read it over and over again. But then <laughs> life got crazy and... Um, my husband became an elder and built our church building and it was just crazy and I rejoined in uh, 2000, 2000 yeah 2006 because it's been 16 years and I was promoted to leader in um, 2012 yay um, struggled with having a team under me um, but in, in all the reason I really wanted to join was the books, of course. But when I grew, was growing up, I always struggled with reading. And one of the reasons I went to homeschool, my children are called to homeschool, is because I wanted to be able to teach them to read. And I have successfully taught all four of my children to read. And my last one struggled with reading, struggled with speech and reading. And to this day, he is reading, if you ever heard of the writer, um, Thomas Sowell, Mm -hmm. um, he's a well. He's a he's reading big, big books. He loves books now. Oh, he likes the books that have the gold really. and the. He goes and buys these expensive books. <laughs> and he was an adult. He did, is an adult book club. And it's just wonderful. And his favorite books were the illustrated, um, and the sticker books. Remember um, where you dress the the characters for the boys wow. that we don't even have anymore. Hmm. Um, it's so and cool. that's not mice. Yeah, uh, I can't say enough about that's not mice. Uh, <laughs> from the time they're babies to the time, even when I would at a booth, kids being eight and nine years old would come up and open those books up 
and even adults they, because they're so engaging they are and they, are. they really and so i can't the books do get better every year they really do um, thank you all so much for coming thank you marcy for sharing oh, you're your welcome. story i wanted them to hear it just because of the history that you have and the whole thing of you know and and the great thing is yes some of us can earn trips and some of us don't earn trips and that's okay everybody everybody's important so it doesn't really matter if you've right. sold 50,000 compared to 5,000, it doesn't matter. Everybody's important and everybody has a story to tell. So I want to um, end tonight with letting you think about Day of UBAM, which is coming up on the 20, um, the 19th, which is a Saturday. And I'm actually going to be in Austin that particular time. But let's be thinking about something that we can do as a team that day. And we may have to use social media to really showcase it and we can tag UBM tractors day of UBM or something like that. And I'll do a poll and you can give me some ideas because I don't ever want to come to you and say, hey, this is what we need to do. You don't have a choice. You know, I want your ideas. I mean, that's what I think is important is to get your ideas. And this time last year we did the book drive. I don't know if we have time enough to organize that, but maybe we could do a, a kickoff or something or something, something something to get back to the community, whether we all donate a 10 or $15 book to a little library or something, you know, maybe we can do something like that. So we thinking about that, but I know we're a little again? bit longer tonight. Go ahead. What day is that again, Janet? It's on the 19th, the 19th. February, February 20th, but convention registration is coming up in a couple of weeks. I think it's the 15th or something next week. So be thinking I think it's the 14th. Oh, it's the 14th. Okay. I thought oh, it was 14th. Monday. It's Monday then. Okay. The 14th. So be thinking about that. Be thinking about if you can go with us to that. Diana and I, and I believe Sharon are coming. We're road tripping. And then I have to fly back early because my kiddos are graduating from high school mm -hmm. this weekend, <laughs> which is a big, huge celebration too in itself. And I get triplets to graduation. That's a big celebration. So anyway, but. <laughs> but um but anyway be thinking about that um it's a great thing whether you're virtual or whether you're in person but if you can be with us in person it would be lots and lots of fun so thank you Ruth, for joining us too tonight and um oh thank you all so much thanks for sharing your story i love all the points that you made such important points things like you don't know what a difference this is going to make to somebody and and realizing they don't know sometimes what a difference it could make and sharing i love your stories thank you so much for including me i'm so proud of all of you <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you thank you and um we will talk at y'all later thank you again for being here and making this work have a good night y'all all right bye bye, -bye.